just naturally came um, being how my natural ability to be able to jump on the trampoline, did a little gymnastics at the Globeville Recreational Center where I grew up at. Just spent a lot of time at the rec center, so I was good on the trampoline and tumbling and stuff like that. And when I got in the ring, it was just somehow I just was able to incorporate all the acrobatic and the flips into my style of wrestling after I taught myself. After I taught myself and had the opportunity to go to Japan and learn what real wrestling was about, that's when I really finally got the love. It was either make it or break it when I had an opportunity to go to Japan. And from there, my career took off. How soon after did you end up going to Japan? We're in 84? How was it was, say, 84. It was closer to the end of 85, 86, before I had an opportunity to go over to Japan. Freddy was talking about it, made a videotape of me, sent it over to Japan, had his buddy doctored all up, made me look good, um, said that he'll try to get me in over at the dojo. Waited about a year, and you know, here and there, didn't hear nothing. About a year, year and a half later, he called me up and said, Hey, would you be honored to go to Japan and train? Would you be willing? I looked at him and said, Yeah, I would be honored if they would let me go to Japan and train. And then he said, They're going to pay you? So, wait a minute, I can go to a wrestling school overseas in Japan where the best wrestlers in the world come from, and they're going to pay me to train? Yes, I'm going to do that. At that time, the wife was praying. I said, hey, this is either chance to make or break it. So, brother, you know, sometimes in life, you got to know when to jump on them opportunities. And that was my opportunity to jump and run. So I jumped on an airplane, flew my ass over to Japan, got my butt kicked for four, five, six, seven months. And now look where I'm at. And were you the only American over in Japan, or were there any others? At that given point in time, believe it or not, Chris Benoit, had just graduated out of dojo. He was real popular over there. There was a, a few guys that had came through the dojo and uh, was able to graduate and pass and get through that when I was able to go through there, Chris ended up staying two weeks in Japan to teach me what kind of an ass kicking I had coming. I had no ideas about the squats, the push-ups, and you know the the amateur style wrestling and the grappling, and you know oh, I had no idea. I was a golden glove boxer. I knew about boxing. I grew up in the projects. I knew about kicking ass, standing alive, and being survival. That's what I knew. When I went to Japan, I swear to God that Japanese people were some of the smallest motherfuckers in the world. And when I went over to that Japan, I was the smallest one in the damn dojo. I said, "Damn, what am I gonna do now?" I said, that's all right. I know how to fight. If I got to, I'll knock these motherfuckers out. But they never told me I was going to be having my arm and legs touch places it ain't never touched. I must have cried like a bitch for about the first three weeks before I realized all you got to do is tap out before they break it off. So seeing what you went through in your training, looking at this current generation of wrestlers, which does include myself, you know, does it maybe rub you the wrong way, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, but uh, you know, seeing how, how easy people have it nowadays when it comes to wrestling. Nowadays, it ain't like it was back in the day. If you was not doing 120 days a year, you was not considered a professional wrestler. You couldn't even call yourself a professional wrestler back in the day if you weren't doing 120 shows a year. Which you that know, breaks down to roughly, a lot of roughly about 10 shows a month. Give or take. Give or take, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you got to figure most kids, that's a weekend warrior, one show on the weekend, but you've been doing this for two or three years, and now all of a sudden you want to call yourself a professional wrestler. I don't think you really put your dues in. You ain't had to carry the ring. You ain't had to take the ring up and down for $20, $15 a month for the night, not having enough to get a meal to eat, but you was learning. Mm -hmm. You ain't never had to carry a wrestler's bag, do his laundry. You know, one, two, three o'clock in the damn morning and be on the bus by 10, but you didn't get done with laundry until six. That's what's about putting your dues in. The kids nowadays, unlike yourself, who takes this shit seriously, they get a lot of shit handed to them. Everybody want to wear kick pads. Everybody want to look like they want to, you know, like everybody else. Everybody looks to goddamn say everybody wearing kick pads. Half the people that wear kick pads don't even kick. Why the hell you wear kick pads when you don't even kick? Now you just look like everybody else and you ain't got nothing to stand out. Thank you for watching the Hannibal TV. Please like this video if you enjoyed it and click the subscribe button to not miss any of our latest shoot interviews, match videos, or news updates. Support us on Patreon.com for $1.99 a month to watch our full shoot interviews ad-free and help our channel grow.
Follow us on Twitter at The Hannibal TV for instant updates.